This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a fantasy sci-fi film called Everything Beautiful is Far Away. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. A robot named Susan claims that she can neither tell the truth nor lie, but she can recount the events as she remembers them. Her creator, Lernert, decided to live a simple life in the desert because he got tired of the city's noise and crowds. Lernert soon found out that life in the desert is difficult, so he built Susan to help him. Susan accompanied Lernert as he walked through the desert and she took care of him, but the desert sand slowly damaged her body until she could no longer walk. Lernert disassembled Susan so he could continue his journey. Lernert eventually ran out of batteries for Susan, but he promised to fix her before she shut down. Susan recalls that Lernert made the promise 982 days ago. Although the robot remains offline, the lonesome Lernert can't help but talk to her. During a rest stop, Lernert recounts how Susan used to love traveling with him to the city. Susan would print out an itinerary, and they'd spend the whole day walking around just to look at anything in their path. Lernert acknowledges that he still doesn't know how long it would take to repair Susan, but he stresses that he's doing everything he can to get her back online. Lernert looks at the robot's head and wishes that Susan would respond, but he realizes that it's not fair to her. He apologizes and promises that he'll keep working to fix her. When Lernert runs out of water, he sticks a pipe equipped with a faucet and a crank to the ground. Then, he rotates the crank and opens the spout. When no water comes out, he walks several paces away and repeats the process until he finds water to fill his canteen. Lernert nourishes himself by eating a root vegetable he finds in the desert. When he's not traveling, he spends his time cleaning Susan's head and making some adjustments. One day, Lernert comes across a woman lying on the ground. He notices the foam around her mouth, so he rolls the root vegetable beside her to look at its base. The woman suddenly wakes up choking, so Lernert immediately gives her some water. He then runs back to his camp to get antitoxin pellets and returns to the woman to put the crushed pellets in her mouth, nose, and ears. When the woman wakes up hours later, Lernert offers her a root vegetable. He then shows her two root vegetables and tells her that the one in his left hand, a carniptus root, is safe to eat. The vegetable in his right hand, a dactyl root, is the one that poisoned her. The two almost look the exact same except for the green ring on the base of the carniptus root. Lernert advises the woman to look for the green ring next time she finds a root vegetable. Lernert asks the woman for her name before introducing himself and Susan. The woman seems reluctant to tell Lernert her name, so he suggests that they just pretend that they never met. The woman agrees and walks away. As Lernert continues his journey, he comes across a pile of junk, so he inspects the items to see if he could use any of them to repair Susan. He tries opening a tin can to examine its contents, but a mild explosion knocks him out. Hours later, the woman sees Lernert lying on the ground. Instead of reviving him right away, she inspects the robot head and his other belongings first. After eating Lernert's stash of carniptus root, the woman reads a comic book Lernert created. The protagonist of the book, titled The Quest for the Key, is a solitary samurai named Todd. In the story, a boy arrives at Todd's house to relay a message from the king. When Todd asks how the child reached his house, the boy discloses that the king sent him across the Great Crystal Lake on his fastest boat. The woman puts down the comic book and removes a tiny shrapnel from Lernert's forehead. Later, Lernert regains consciousness with a bandage on his head. When the woman confesses that she read the book, Lernert tells her that it was private. The woman apologizes and reveals that her name is Rola. After eating their meal, Lerner looks at the other items in the pile of junk and finds a battery. When he connects it to Susan, the robot malfunctions and repeats the phrase, The crystal is close. Rolla surmises that this could mean that the crystal lake is close. Soon, the robot comes online and tells Lerner that she missed him. Susan notices the bandage on Lernert's head, so she tells him to let her examine it. After scanning his head, Susan tells Lernert that he'll be fine. As Lernert tells Susan about his journey, Rolla interrupts him and asks if Susan referred to the Crystal Lake earlier. However, the battery runs out and the robot goes offline again. Rolla tells Lernert that he doesn't have to keep the Crystal Lake a secret from her, because she's also a believer. When Lernert asks what she's talking about, Rolla surmises that he's feigning ignorance, so she points out that Lernert wrote about the Crystal Lake in his book. She promises that she won't tell anyone and discloses that she came to the desert alone to find the lake. Rolla didn't take anyone with her because she fears that people would destroy the lake if they learned about it. About it. Lernert shares that he's been out in the desert for a long time, but he's never seen a trace of a lake. He contends that he only made up the Crystal Lake for his book. Despite what Lernert says, Rolla still thinks that he's on a journey to find the lake, so Lernert clarifies that he's been wandering around the desert to find parts for Susan. Rolla points out that he can find the parts in the cities, but Lernert says that it's too expensive and he doesn't like traveling there. Rolla still believes that the lake exists, so she asks Lernert to join her in finding it because he knows a lot about the desert. Rolla's scowl turns into a wide smile when Lernert 
Rolnert agrees to come with her. Throughout their journey, Lerner gathers edible vegetables because Rola doesn't know anything about desert plants. When they run out of water, Lerner teaches her how to find it. Rola is disgruntled when she can't find a spot with water, so Lerner encourages her that it will be worth it when she finally sees the water flowing. As Rola keeps looking for water, she sees something flashing in the distance. Rola wants to find out what it is, but he warns her against running off without filling her canteen with water. Rola gets upset and drops the water pipe when she looks at the distance again and she can no longer see the flashing object. As they continue wandering across the desert, Rola sees a plant that she recognizes. After picking a few leaves, she tells Lernert to put them in his canteen. Lernert refuses because he thinks the plant might be dangerous, but Rola hints that it will make the water taste better. Rola convinces him when she says that she'll try it first. After putting the leaves in the canteen, Rola tries to grab it from Lernert, but he decides to take the first sip. Lernert acknowledges that the leaves made the water taste good, so Rola takes a few more leaves and puts them in the canteen. One day, the pair meets a man heading in the opposite direction. When they ask the stranger how long he's been traveling, the man says he's been walking for three weeks. Rola invites the stranger to join them, but the man doesn't respond. The stranger starts walking toward them to continue his journey, so Lernert takes Rola aside to protect her if he tries something. When Rola goes after the stranger, Lernert tries to hold her back, but she insists on following him. Rola asks the stranger why he's in the desert. The man claims that he didn't like where he was, and he continues walking because he still doesn't like where he is. As the stranger goes on his way, Rola scolds Lernert for holding her back. Lernert says that he's only trying to protect her, but Rola claims that he doesn't need to. When Lernert asks if they could try protecting each other, Rola agrees. As the pair continue their journey, Lernert shares that the stranger reminded him of his former neighbor who always trims his bushes until there's nothing left but twigs. When Rola asks who she reminds him of, he reveals that Rola reminds him of his mother. After setting up camp for the night, Rola notices Lernert working on his book, so she tells him that she can't wait to read the next chapter. The following day, Rola decides to take a peek at the book while Lernert is still asleep. In the new chapter, Todd gained a female companion in his dangerous journey. Todd admires a woman for her wisdom and her determination. Rola returns the book before Lerner wakes up. Soon after Lerner wakes up, they inspect the junk around their camp. Rola finds a cylindrical object hidden inside a canister. When Lerner examines the object, he realizes that it's a polycarbine fusion-centric energy core that's still functioning at half capacity. The device can power Susan for a lifetime, so Rola immediately grabs the robot head to connect it to the power source. When Susan comes online, she asks Lernert if he's already begun assembling her. Lernert explains that they just found a suitable power source, but he assures her that he'll find the parts for her soon. Rola then asks Susan what she knows about the Crystal Lake and reminds her that she once mentioned it, and that it was close. The robot confirms that she was talking about the lake, but they're nowhere near it because they went in the wrong direction. When Lernert asks how she learned about the lake, Susan explains that it was part of her programming. After Rola asks for the direction of the lake, she then inquires how long it would take to get there if they walk at Lernert's average pace. The robot calculates that it would take more than two weeks of walking to reach the lake. As they go on their way, Susan gives them advice to reduce exhaustion. The robot tells Lerner to keep his heart rate around 150, but he traded the heart monitor long ago. Susan also gives them proper directions so they don't go off course. In addition, Susan tells them the optimal time to rest and the amount of food they should consume. Roll asks Susan why she thinks that she knows what they need, so the robot explains that she has thousands of algorithms that calculate the variables that affect both of them for each nanosecond. Rola then inquires if Susan was aware when she wasn't connected to a battery. Lerner tells her that Susan didn't know anything at that time, but Susan's internal clock was running even though she was offline. She reveals that she knows how long that she was offline for the moment that she was rebooted. Rola admits that she asked the questions because Susan mentioned that she missed Lerner when she went offline. After another day's journey, Lernert notes that they walked 39.1 kilometers that day. Susan remembers that they used to walk less than 3 kilometers a day when she had a body. They had to conserve energy back then, so they only needed to walk to replenish their food and water supply. Susan then warns them that walking at a great distance could be dangerous because the distribution of edible plants in the desert is low compared to the calories they need to survive. Lernert then reveals that Susan told them earlier that they're probably not going to reach the lake. According to Susan, the number of edible plants in the direction they're headed is even lower than the places that they pass through, so they probably won't have enough food to get there. However, Lernert hints that they don't have to follow Susan's recommendations because they're just predictions based on her calculations. Despite Susan's warnings, the pair continue their journey to find the lake. Soon, most of the plants they find are dactyl roots, so Susan advises them to ration what little food they have left. 
As they keep going, Rolla comes across a pile of junk. She hints that they should start building a body for Susan, but Susan insists that it's not a priority because their current primary objective is finding the lake. Rolla wants to find the lake too, but she doesn't consider it her primary objective. Her primary objective is to be happy. When Rolla asks Susan if she wants to be happy, the robot points out that it's not part of her programming. Rolla then asks if Susan was sad when she missed Lernert, so Susan explains that she was programmed to miss Lernert when she's offline for more than 96 hours. Rolla then asks Lernert to sit down. She confesses that she likes him and points out that Lernert doesn't have to program her to say it. After running out of food, Lernert asks Susan if there's another route that would take less energy, but the robot tells them there's no other way. Lernert points out that they can't turn back, so the robot advises them to find edible plants as soon as possible. Soon, the pair finds plants that they don't recognize. Susan notes that the vegetables look like a pombal beet, a poisonous root with yellow skin and pink stripes. Rolla points out that the plant they found has spots instead of stripes, but Lernert doesn't want to take the risk because eating a pombal beet could kill a person within 30 seconds. After learning that it would take 8 more days to reach the lake, Rolla takes a bite of the plant and asks Susan to count to 30. As Susan begins counting, Rolla instructs Lernert to take out his antitoxin pellets, but he argues that they're not strong enough to fight the poison from a pombal beet. Lernert urges Rolla to spit out the vegetable, but she argues that there's a chance that the plant isn't poisonous. When Susan finishes counting, Lernert is relieved that Rolla doesn't feel sick at all. Since the plant isn't poisonous, the two are able to gather enough food for their journey. Soon after, Rolla and Lernert reach the lake. After staring at the beauty of the shore for a moment, Rolla giggles in delight and runs to the lake. Lernert soon follows her and ignores Susan's advice to test the toxicity levels of the water. Rolla and Lernert playfully wade through the shore. As the days go by, Lernert learns how to catch fish. He thanks Susan for helping him find the lake. Later, Lernert inspects Susan and notes that there are programs that he didn't write. He deduces that they are residual codes that came with the replacement parts that he found in the desert. Lernert notes that one memory chip contained the lake's coordinates, so Rolla concludes that someone was there before them. When Lernert turns Susan back on, he informs her that he reprogrammed her to set her own primary objective. He reveals that Susan wouldn't miss him anymore. When Susan asks about her body, Lernert confesses that he never tried building one because he was afraid that he'd be alone. Susan assures him that she would never leave him alone and points out that he never programmed her to say that. As the pair look for wooden parts for Susan's body, Lernert reveals that he already knows how to end his book. Lernert narrates that Todd dies after sacrificing his life to the king. As his body lies on a table, the king and his servants stand around and bow their heads in respect. Suddenly, Lady Re enters the room and connects a golden tube from her chest to Todd's. As the tube glows, Todd comes back to life and opens his eyes. Rolla laughs when Lerner tells her that this is how his story ends. Susan recounts that they stayed by the water for six weeks before going to the cities to tell people about the lake. Many people refused to believe it when they spoke about the soothing waves, the abundance of fish, and the high level of moisture in the air. But a few people decided to come. Now, more than 200 people reside by the lake, along with 20 robots. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.